Rewatch 49ers Rams. What did we notice going through this game a second time? What makes Christian McCaffrey so special in Kyle Shanahan's offense? It might be a little bit different than what you think. And tread deadline, some moves happening. Might the 49ers make a move? What is going on with the San Francisco 49ers team during the bye week? Will it be a sleepy bye or will it be an active bye? All that and more coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. With promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Getting into this game a little bit, and uh, we we will have a lull with the bye week. I, I want to look back a little bit at the Rams game, Croc, today, and some things we noticed maybe on the defensive side of the ball, uh, definitely on the offensive side of the ball. And I want to start with the running game and Chris, Christian McCaffrey, which is more than the running game. It's the passing game, too, right? Which is really important. And I loved what I saw from some of the usage. Sunday for Christian McCaffrey in Kyle Shanahan's offense. But I want to start with what makes Christian McCaffrey special. What makes him different? And obviously, the I mean, even if you look at the Carolina Panthers, they're not missing Christian McCaffrey, the running back, because Deontay Foreman, right, who they signed off the street in the summer, is uh, went for over 100 yards and three, t- three touchdowns last week on the ground. And the Panthers actually look better right now post-Christian McCaffrey. A lot of that is because of plugging pj walker in a quarterback but there are some reasons that christian mccaffrey looks different and i think it's just the overall talent level we get to see the best running back we've seen in the kyle shanahan era now on the 49ers and it's it's everything he's better at so much but i think just as a pure runner crock i'm interested in what you think about it what he looks like as a runner it's that you know the top speed's not special for christian mccaffrey i I talked about how i thought he was a half step slow a step slow we saw taylor rap you know run him down before he got to the end zone. Taylor Rapp's not a fast safety either. There are people worried about if he was going to, um, you know, make the league and, and be good in the NFL because of his lack of top speed. But Christian McCaffrey's quicks and his vision is at an elite level. And that's what's fun because he gets to the point where he could potentially have a breakaway run. And that's the value of Christian McCaffrey. That's where he's really awesome. But I think I've seen a few things now with him that is even more – special than the things we've seen with him out in space. You know, he can catch the football. You know, he's got quicks. You know, he's got vision. But it's that ability, and and all the great running backs have it, the ability to find that sliver. Where's that sliver? Can you get your body skinny through the hole? And I've seen him hit a couple of holes now on inside runs that got me excited about Christian McCaffrey, the pure running back, because of what he can find with his eyes, and getting skinny and in finding that hole on the touchdown run, I think a lot of people probably could have run a touchdown in on, on Chris McCaffrey's rushing touchdown, but he did find the space. And there was another run, I think in week one, where he found a little sliver, got through there. Then he makes that break at the second level. It's so hard for linebackers, but it's that vision. It's finding that hole, finding the right hole and, and being able to get through it. Cause some guys, some guys can't get through that hole. Uh, and I love, there's more, I want to talk about with Chris McCaffrey, but Croc, have you noticed that with Christian McCaffrey as a runner, like where he's an extra level better than some of the, you know, undrafted free agents, the late round picks, the the Jeff Wilsons of the world that the 49ers have had at running back that have been pretty good themselves? Yeah, it, I think it's the plays that aren't there. You talked about kind of being able to find that slither in the offensive line to be able to make a play. And my wife, you know, we're watching the 49ers game at the stadium. And she's like, well, why do they just run straight up the middle? Why don't they just run to the outside, right? Like everybody that doesn't really watch a whole lot of football. Like, why do they run into everybody? And we were watching the Browns and Bengals game on the flight home last night. And same thing. She asked a question again. And then Nick Chubb scores a touchdown where 
he kind of finds that the smallest of crease sets up his block and shoots through there and ends up scoring a touchdown. And I said, look, see, this is why that's just the fastest uh, path to the end zone, <laughs> running straight. And she was like, wow, how do you squeeze through that? Well, you do see that with Christian McCaffrey as well, his ability to kind of set that up. And I think the best way to sum it up, and we talk about this with the quarterbacks as well, and there was something that Jimmy Garoppolo did, what I, and I was really excited to see it, but the plays that aren't there, to be made, but you make the play anyways. And that's what makes certain guys more special than others. When you get to the NFL level, there are a lot of guys that are good. There are a lot of guys, even like Elijah Mitchell. I think Elijah Mitchell does a lot of things very well. And when the play is there to be had, he's going to take advantage of every yard that he can get based off that. And it might end up being a 30-yard run, 40-yard run, and maybe you don't get that same type of explosibility from Jeff Wilson. But you know, you just see certain things where it's like, man, if it's there, he's going to get there. He's going to make a play. And he has ability, uh, you know, after contact, et cetera. Well, what about the plays that aren't there to be had? And I think when, you know, we were asking questions about uh, the impact of Christian McCaffrey. And I mean, come on, man. We, we know he's a great running back. We know he's a top five running back in this league. But how much is it of a difference is it going to be for the 49ers to have him? And I think we saw that. And not just in the running game. You talked about that. But in the passing game, man, there was one play where, and I, I like to see guys playing, like playing ahead. And I was watching uh, my guy, Greg Pinelli. He sent me this clip of Josh Allen. Josh Allen snaps the ball. And somehow, some way, the, the, I'm like, how slow does the game have to be moving for you in the middle of a play? Not rolling out. I'm talking about in the middle of a play, in the pocket, you're pointing for a guy to go this way, like almost right when he got the snap. And he just sees it before anybody else is seeing it. And it's happening in slow motion. And he points and his tight end not on the same page because there's only special amount of people that can have that. I'm playing so far ahead of everyone else. So he still ends up throwing a touchdown because Josh Allen, you know, he just can be very great. <laughs> but Christian McCaffrey caught this ball. And the way he's kind of like spun out of it and made the guy miss, it's like he was playing ahead. Like that move was done before he even caught the ball. And I think those are the things that's hard to, you know, we know he's good. We saw him in. In, in, in Carolina, but when you have them on your team and you're watching every single play now, I think those are the special things that might be a little underrated that you see now. And there's like, huh, that's some some big time stuff. Yeah, and it's the, the his running back ability alone is not the difference maker though. It's what else happens, and he's a good running back. But what makes him a great player? It's his receiving ability and you talk about playing ahead and how about the play he made where he bolted down the sideline, sees Jimmy start to break out of the pocket, right. And create Christian McCaffrey goes for it. That, that wasn't his route. He was out in the, in the flats. He bolts. Jimmy sees it, throws it to him and the ability to sky and the ball skills, to climb the ladder. Right. So that I think is, if you're looking at a play for Christian McCaffrey in that game, there were the rushing yards, there was the passing touchdown that schemed up. It was a nice throw and everything, but you know, that that's not an every game situation. And it, it was that play. The reason you traded for Christian McCaffrey was that play, the receiving touchdown and the ability for him to see it, Jimmy to see him see it. Cause you see that a lot where a quarterback rolls out and the receivers don't help him. We even saw it a couple of weeks ago with Jimmy, who rolled out of the pocket, tried to do the point thing to Kittle. Kittle didn't go to the back of the end zone. He went there where Jimmy, where he, where Jimmy wanted him to go to throw the ball. Ends up being an incompletion. People are like, "Oh, what a terrible pass by Jimmy Garoppolo!" But no, he wanted him to go to the corner. In this situation, he didn't have to point. Christian McCaffrey recognizes it, sees him start to flush the pocket. He knows what his job is. He goes, boom, boom, skies catches the ball for a touchdown. That's the that's yeah. the special stuff. That's the good stuff right there. And there was a play, too, and I talked about Elijah Mitchell and him making the plays that are there. But sometimes with Elijah Mitchell, it's like, man, there, what about the, what I call, like, not empty plays, but there was a play that it was clear that uh, Chris McCaffrey did not leave yards on the field. And it was in the start of the second half. He had this run where he bounced it left, and he had a big run. It was like on the first drive out, 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 out of the half. And – you see those plays where maybe somebody else gets six yards and it ends up looking like a good run, but he turned what possibly was a six-yard run for someone else ends up being a 30-yard run or whatever it was for Christian McCaffrey. And, uh, those are the things that I think have me even more excited moving forward. And just the usage. And uh, they came out this game, and again, at the game, you don't notice everything, but during the rewatch, re I noticed it. First play of the game, they lined up in 21 personnel, right? So 21 personnel, that's two backs, one tight end. And typically you see that with a back and Kyle Juszczyk 
and maybe Kyle Juszczyk in the backfield or I formation. Well, no, they didn't do that. They, he was in the slot. So your two backs were Jeff Wilson, who was to the left of the quarterback, and then uh, 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 Christian McCaffrey, who's in the slot, and he runs a route. And it's like, okay, you start to see some wrinkles and how this might be able to open things up. And they did that a, a few times where it was 21 personnel with those two guys in. And will that continue when Kyle Juszczyk comes back? You know, we'll see. But definitely just interesting usage. And also, how will it be when, when Debo Simmons comes, comes back? Because, you know, Debo is part of that kind of, when we say 21 personnel, because he's a wide back, he can be in the backfield, he can be in the slot. Are you still viewing him as, as a running back type? Uh, those are things that are going to be interesting to continue to watch moving forward. I want to get into that a little bit more. Some of those formations, the the dual halfback formations, what it can look like, what it looked like last week, what it could look like, whether use checks in there or not, whether Debo is in there or not. And then look a little bit on the defensive side of the ball as well. Why is Talano Hufanga missing so many tackles? Uh, what we liked, what we didn't like from the defensive side of the ball upon rewatch from those San Francisco 49ers. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. And how easy is it? You don't have to even pick a full team. You can make entries in, uh, you can make an entry in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. I could make an entry right here while I'm talking about prize picks. All you do is you open up the app as I'm doing right now and you look at what the prize picks projections are. You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people either. It's just you against those prize picks projections that are available. And of course, NFL football, tons of projections, rushing yards for different players, passing yards for different players for the upcoming week or NBA, Major League Baseball, college football, college basketball, women's hoops, esports, soccer, tennis, NASCAR, MMA, boxing, you name it. They've got all the sports and projections at prize picks so you can play daily fantasy sports whenever you want, especially when those yearly fantasy leagues you're in start to go in the tank for a lot of people that is already long past withdrawals are safe and fast and when you download the prize prize picks app you can use our promo code to get a little bit of a bonus download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com sign up to play daily fantasy sports and first time users can receive a 100 instant deposit match up to 100 with promo code locked on if you deposit $100, dollars price picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50 more to play with. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked on Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, Croc. Let's talk a little bit about that 21 personnel we mentioned. And we've seen it before a couple times. We saw a couple weeks ago where Ty Davis Price was in there and ended up being the lead blocker. Uh, we've seen it with Debo in the past where uh, Jeff Wilson was in there and, and looked like a lead blocker. I want to see more of it. If we see more of that, though, that means we'll see less of Kyle Juszczyk. Is it possible, Croc, that the 49ers are more explosive on offense if Kyle Juszczyk isn't in there anymore? Is is that what we're looking at in the future? If you're going to pay Christian McCaffrey a lot, the 49ers have a lot of players they got to pay. They don't have a lot of draft picks to go replenish some situations. So they might have to spend on offensive linemen. They might have to spend on some positions, a uh, defensive tackle that they can't draft high in the top 50, top 100 picks. Can they afford to let an OW like Kyle Juszczyk go in future off seasons? And can we see more? two halfback formations from the 49ers because I like it. I like all the things you can do from it. And especially when one of your halfbacks is a wide receiver. And especially if one of your wide receivers can be a halfback like Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey can be. And uh, you mentioned on the first play of the game, and I think they started in the backfield and I think Christian McCaffrey motioned to the slot. And now it's like, Oh, what's going on? And the ball, it still ended up going to Wilson. Right. And then the second play, they're both in the backfield. Then the ball goes to Christian McCaffrey. So I love that. And it makes you, it makes the offense so balanced. You know, it makes you makes you ambidextrous almost on offense when you got two halfbacks. And you know you can go one way or the other. You know you can pass. You know you can run. Whereas if you have a fullback, you, you can still pass and run, but it's just not quite as explosive, but it's still 21 personnel. 
Yeah, I don't want to diminish, you know, Kyle Juszczyk's role on this team. Oh, no. I think as a leader, his smarts, I mean, there, there's been times where he's the one calling out line adjustments and, and kind of doing some of the quarterbacks work for them. So mentally, you know, he's there uh, being that Swiss Army nice, being able to, you know, be a blocker, but also a terrific pass catcher as a whatever you want to call him, fullback, tight end, H-back, whatever that is. I think essentially he's an H-back, right? Is that what he is? I think he's listed as a fullback, but he's more Chris Cooley even though he doesn't get the amount of targets, but he's more H-back, right? Delaney Walker on the 49ers, that that type of player. And then, so here you go. You could have check still on the field. He's playing less fullback, more tight end. You don't have to worry about trying to throw passes to Charlie Warner anymore because now you got check as your tight end too. It basically uses that H-back, right? Yeah. Right. I'll so uh, uh, Ross Dwelly, I thought, kind of showed. And again, this is not a saying you do not need Kyle check, but in the sense of, hey, maybe one to be a little bit more explosive in certain ways, I can see this in an area where they go more to what looks like 11 personnel, but only because they have all these other guys that are able to be so versatile. And we watched the Rams. One thing that was very interesting to me was early on, and even now, the Rams run primarily 11 personnel. Concepts and things like that, their philosophy on how they see the field between Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan is probably very similar. But they just do it different ways. One runs more 21, the other one runs more 11. And, and that's fine. Having guys like McCaffrey and Debo Samuel, where you can run 11, you can run 21, but 21 is counting Debo or McCaffrey as a back. I think that's something that uh, really works to the 49ers' advantage a, a, a lot. And again, when people are excited about the trade and what it potentially does to opposing defenses, I think we're starting to see how that can maybe screw up some of the things because this was the most – efficient game the 49ers have had offensively and it, and it might just be as simple as plugging in Christian McCaffrey and now being able to do a lot more from that standpoint not only 21 croc but it's 31 personnel right when you got Debo in there as well if Debo was starting the game instead of Ray Ray McLeod now you got Debo out there and you got Wilson and McCaffrey in the backfield that's three running backs one tied in but it's also 11 personnel and that's where you get positionless football. Like you could do it, just about anything in the world you want. Go empty. You go old school wishbone. You got three running backs in the backfield. Uh, sky's the limit there. So yeah, fun. And we'll see how Kyle Shanahan utilizes that. We'll see what the usages with McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell, if they all get back and they're hoping, I mean, look at this list of names, Croc, that the 49ers could get back next week. Um, we're talking about use check. We're talking about Debo Samuel, who we've already mentioned. Elijah Mitchell could be coming off IR and come back either right after the buy or soon thereafter. Juwan Jennings at wide receiver. A big one for the 49ers is Eric Armstead. Will he be back after the buy? Because that would be huge. Um, Aziz Al Shair, Drake Greenlaw, uh, Jordan Willis. And then you also have Jason Verrett and, and Javon Kinlaw. Uh, Javon Kinlaw really seems like it's a, you know, a chronic injury. And, and I don't know if, you know, Verrett or Kinlaw, they could both come in and, and it be stars for the 49ers at the end of the year uh in the second half they could neither one could take a snap i have no idea what to think about either one of those guys but there's still a lot the 49ers could get back and you know debo juice with mccaffrey with elijah mitchell i mean fascinating i can't wait to see what that ends up looking like and, and how the touches get distributed and i'm sure it'll be different every week too which is another fun factor of it because you see one game you're like oh chris mccaffrey 26 touches well what if he only gets you know, 12 touches next week, and half of those runs go to Elijah Mitchell. A couple more go to Debo, but then he's getting thrown the ball 10 times. You know what I mean? So um, the, the the usage could go really in any direction. And I think that's the part that people are kind of excited about. And you, when you reference 2021 and how that season started, right, 49ers, oh, man, they started 3-5, and five and they were able to get to the NFC Championship game. And you look at this season, you know, it's, well, they started 3-3, three and three, and then you win a game, and, you know, you, you get some guys, and guys start to get healthy. What can it possibly look like for the 49ers down the stretch? Are, are the 49ers just starting to kind of open up that stride right now to where it's like, all right, let's start cooking now. I felt like that, well, I think against the Panthers, and I know the Panthers are trash, but actually maybe not. I don't know. They had a good game against the Falcons. The 49ers lost to the Falcons. But, you know, P.J. Walker threw for 300 yards. But anyways, um, it, I feel like once I start to kind of get ahead of myself with, all right, here are the 49ers that we expected to see. Then it's like, ah, nope, not quite there yet, Croc. Do you think they finally are starting to hit that stride to where 49er fans week to week can be a lot more confident entering games? Because my my biggest, I don't want to say gripe, but my biggest pushback has been, I just haven't, the offense hasn't shown me that they can really score points. 
Like the offense in this game, the offense scored 31 points. It wasn't defense picking the ball off and running it back. It wasn't defense setting up short field. It was the offense moving down the field. The offense put up 31 points. Do you think that this will now start to be consistent? Or is it, nah, 49ers, they just, they just know the Rams. <laughs> it's it's hard. And I think that's one of the points that we have to bring up is, this, man, the Rams are in a bad place too right now. And so we'll have to wait and see on that. But this is this this is exact spot where the 49ers started to take off last year as well. Remember, it was after eight games. 49ers were in a worse spot last year, three and five after eight games. And then they went on a run and they ended up going to the NFC championship game. So you hope, you know, the the health does stay intact the second half. They do get guys back and don't add guys. I mean, the 49ers didn't add anybody to the injury list this week. How insane is that? Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So the 49ers are, are in a pretty good spot coming out of this thing. And um, and, and hopefully the points do continue. But you've got to see a little bit, you know, bigger sample here with all the players back. And on paper, it should be really hard to defend. But the Rams team is in is in bad shape. I want to talk more about that Rams team and, and the 49ers defense in a second. But um, there's one more aspect that might be the most important aspect of why Christian McCaffrey uh, is a special football player. And it's something that isn't always quantifiable. And it's not something when you put on the tape, you see on the field. And it's not even something that we saw necessarily that much from Christian McCaffrey on the field when he played against the 49ers just a few weeks ago with the Carolina Panthers. So what is the number one thing that makes Christian McCaffrey special next? And let's talk defense, what it looked like against those Los Angeles Rams upon rewatch next. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. When I'm talking about every game, yeah, not just NFL football, not just college football. NBA season's going now. And if you want to make a wager at BetOnline, you want to be informed on that wager as well. So, as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for sports wagering and information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there major league baseball mma boxing golf you name it you can find it at bet online head over to the website today or, or use your mobile device to learn more about all of the trends and all of the action at bet online where the game starts what makes christian mccaffrey really go where does he help the 49ers to most the most not the running game i don't think We've talked about what the Panthers look like in the running game, what the 49ers have been in the running game. He's the best running back the 49ers have had. But I hope the 40, I hope Kyle Shannon doesn't just go back to, okay, Christian McCaffrey, we're going to throw it to him a couple times, but we're going to run the ball a lot because Debo's back and Debo's going to get all those touches that Christian McCaffrey got as a wide receiver or a, a, you know, a slot guy last week. George Kittle had a quote, and, and this is really important. It's something I've really noticed, and it's something that takes uh, watching a player up close to really – to really gain this and and maybe you know george kittle surprised by it a little bit he said quote talking about christian mccaffrey george kittle said quote he's a guy you can tell every day he wants to be great his work ethic shows it he shows up every single day he's early uh, he's here early leaves late takes care of his body takes care of his mind and that's something I noticed from the second carry from Christian McCaffrey with the 49ers. He was so mad that he didn't break his second carry. And it's just seeing uh, he was even more explosive when he showed up with the 49ers, in my opinion, than he looked when he was with the Panthers. Maybe just the losing starts to add up. and You don't have that extra little edge. When I saw him with the 49ers, the way he's competing, the way he learned the offense in 10 freaking days, right? Uh, how he works, how he worked with Jimmy Garoppolo on that play to get in the end zone, sky up to, to – to make the catch like his desire and his want to, and how hard he runs the ball every single play. He wants to get every single uh, inch that he can gain on a play, seeing how hard he works to plan his foot and get out of his breaks. He's not taking plays off at all, right? He's playing his butt off. Uh, those are the kinds of things that you have to see a player a lot, really watch him day in and day out to, to start to learn. And you kind of know that about him. And I know, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan had talked about it and they knew the family and was like, all right, you know, his dad. So, you know, you think he's a great kid or whatever. He's known him for a long time. Like he, he's, he's wired like a, a star player. And, and that's the extra level of Christian McCaffrey that maybe when you just watch him on the field, it's like, yeah, he's great. But what really makes him great? These are the things that make you great in the NFL. It's from the neck up. So, so pretty, you're summing it up by like just kind of great leadership. Right. And have the 49ers been missing that offensively? That's been the question I get a lot. And, 
you know, on social media and whatnot, who's the 49ers leader? And it's like, man, I don't know. It's supposed to be Jimmy G, but Jimmy G wasn't there the whole offseason. And, you know, is it as simple as just, okay, Jimmy, you're our leader now again. Uh, not not exactly sure, but it sounds like Christian McCaffrey actually brings kind of that level of what the team is kind of needing, right? right. Are you getting it from Trent Williams? Maybe. I don't know. Are you getting it from Debo Samuel? Like, Debo is probably your best player. But are you getting that? style of leadership first guy in last guy out heady you know gets it up here on self again I, I don't know i have no idea but it sounds like they are telling us <laughs> you 100 percent get it from christian mccaffrey and i think that's something really good to hear especially when you give up what you did to get them what it potentially might cost you a player here and there down the line maybe maybe not you got to increase in cap space but Overall, whatever you hoped you were getting so far, the early returns on it is this was an excellent trade. Now, still, still early, but that, from a production standpoint, usage standpoint, like when you're in your head, when you say you got Christian McCaffrey, like oh well, it's gonna be better, you know, through the air, gonna throw the ball to him, and you know he's gonna run the ball, he's gonna rip off these big runs, and uh, bring, you know, great leadership. It's like whoa, dang, we're getting all those things, and that's exciting. Yeah, and like the 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 picks are gone now. So and those don't come into play until later. So when you look back later, is it a win trade? You don't know. But right now you you clearly got better. And that's what the 49ers were like, you know, F them picks. They're trying to get better now. And we'll see what that looks like. And hopefully, you know, healthy McCaffrey's with the 49ers and they're in the playoffs. And you know, it starts uh, to look like those types of things, which is the reason why you make a trade like this. Um, and later will be a time to officially grade this one as far as, you know, the trade goes and, and doesn't end up working out for the 49ers. So hopefully knock on wood, Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy because it was fun seeing him out there on the field with his full usage last week. Um, moving on to the defensive side of the ball, Croc, what did you see out there? And and just the first little talking point here is why is Talano Hufanga missing so many tackles? Because he's all over the place. Is he a little too reckless at times? He's got 13 <laughs> missed tackles on the year. It's more than double anybody else on the 49ers roster. And it's top, I think, top three in the league for missed tackles. I would say this. I mean, most, coaches, most coaches would tell you this as well. I would rather have a player like Hufunga who you have to say, hey, man, you know, you can settle down just a little bit as opposed to some as opposed to somebody who is like, hey, man, can you turn it up a little bit? Like, can you play at a higher speed? I think when you're watching the film, it jumps out immediately. 50, and I actually noted this, 54 and 29 effort. Like, that, that's what I put. Those guys do not take a playoff, and they are going 1,000% full speed every single rep. And in turn, especially when you're Hufunga, he has missed a couple tackles that he would like back. So I think over time, the more he plays, the more the game starts to slow down for him. You could see maybe him start to not miss those type of tackles, right? Where he's like, all right, now I know, okay, I don't have to play full speed and run through every single person to where, man, I'm playing so fast that maybe it messes up my angle. Now I can be a little bit more patient with how I attack guys and understand the angles a little bit. So a lot of missed tackles, like you said, one of the most you know missed tackles guys in the league. But – all right, okay, you're there. How does this continue moving forward? And are you saying for the rest of his career, he's just a guy that just misses a lot of tackles? And if that's the case, do you trade off a missed tackle here and there for his big playability? You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to mess that up. And he had a big play in this game that got overturned because of a penalty, but he did intercept the ball in the end zone. He will always be around the ball, and I think part of it is because of how fast he plays. So if that's the trade off, hey, you're going to miss a tackle a game. Or even two tackles a game that aren't maybe killing you, right? But you miss a tackle and a half a game. But you are having game-changing plays. I'll, I'll take the missed tackle. It's like the drops, right, with Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is going to mm -hmm. lead the league in drops, or if he's going to have a drop a game, but also I can throw him a quick screen and he take it 80 yards to the touchdown, well, then I don't care about the one drop a game. And it could be the same as people saying, oh, F them picks. Well, Okay, if I give up picks for Christian McCaffrey, but then he ends up being an all-world, all-pro, all-everything that you want at running back, then forget those picks, right? Like, if the trade-off is is better, right? If, there, it's a, if it's a net positive, then I don't care. So Hufunga and his missed tackles, hopefully he figures it out. But if he doesn't, man, he makes enough plays, and I see enough things that he does in coverage away from the ball that I don't care about a missed tackle here and there. Yeah, and it's funny because you mentioned 54 and 29, and that was sort of the thing with – uh, Fred Warner early in his career too was a lot of missed tackles. He flew around, but he missed some tackles. He's gotten a little bit better at that, but occasionally Warner will miss some tackles too. So kind of similar style play with those two guys. 
Uh, we got to get out of here pretty soon here, Croc. Uh, I will, any, any other notes from rewatch on the defensive side of the ball? Because I know you asked me earlier, and I'll kind of throw it back to you, was the performance in the second half on defense after you know a couple of, of long drives and the Cooper Cup touchdown by the Rams, the 49ers pitched a shutout from there on out. Uh, was this a factor of the Rams just being in a really bad place right now, or was this the 49ers sort of figuring things out on the fly, getting right there during week eight? You know, one, let's start with how the Rams came out. And I have seen a lot of people mention, why are they throwing so many screens? Why are they throwing so many screens? Well, they got sacked seven times last time the 49ers played the, the Rams. And a big part of that was the 49ers sending a lot of pressure, whether it was either simulated pressure by dropping the guy in the coverage and sending guys or just sending five guys, more guys than they can handle and collapse in the pocket. It results in seven sacks. Well, the Rams said, all right, well, if they're going to come out with that similar type of game plan, then we're going to throw a lot of screens. And early on, I thought it worked. You know, they got some screens out there, got some guys out on the edge. Uh, I say early on. I think one of the first, on the first drive, they tried to throw a screen on third down. It did not work on that play. Shout out to Orenberg. Orenberg's quietly had a good game. Quietly. That was one thing I noticed in the rewatch. So I yeah. do want to kind of give him his flowers. Or, one thing you noticed with Burks during the game was, you know, he had that zone deep middle of the field when Cooper Cup scored the touchdown. But just about everything else that he did in the game was, was pretty darn yeah. good. And he had a pass breakup on him and, and whatnot. But mm -hmm. he, he was in on that tackle on that first third down. But anyways, uh, it was interesting to see how the 49ers adjusted. Now, I am not a schematic person. I don't dive into, like, pure scheme. I, obviously, I'll give an idea or a thought on how I feel about things. But unless you're, like, just 100% in the meetings or understand defense inside and out, which I'm not that guy or I'm not putting in that type of work to truly understand all the calls that they're making and all their adjustments, right? But overall, whatever they did, it worked. Now, you talked about, was it the Rams? I think the Rams are bad. The, the Rams the Rams have a bottom six scoring offense in the league right now, I believe it is. Like, the Rams are not good. So, and, the, and now we've seen enough of it, right? To, when you start to figure out, like, who is the team? Is the team good? Is the team bad? Like, who are they? Well, they're starting to show their true colors through the seven games that they've played. The Rams aren't good. So part of it was them kind of outside of their two drives where it's like, hey, we're going to do these different things and we're going to get down the field and they're going to call, you know, five penalties inside the five and they kind of usher us into a touchdown, all right? Well, when you don't start, when you stop getting those things in the 49ers, three penalties, I believe, for eight yards, when you stop getting those things to help you and the 49ers aren't turning the ball over, then it's going to get hard for them. And that's what happened. There weren't the, the aiding uh, penalties in, in the second half. They had to actually play good football. And I don't think that they're a good football team. And I think we saw the, the effects of that. And the 49ers, the, we know the defense can play well. When they're on, they play, play, they play extremely well. And we saw the effects of that as well. A, a good defense against a bad offense. The good defense did what the good defense was supposed to do against a bad offense. The trade deadline is coming a little bit later today, Croc. We will have that covered on the Winky Wednesday podcast, everything that happens at the deadline. Do you think the 49ers are going to do something? Uh, Kyle Shanahan said that the roster was pretty set. He said, quote, I'd be surprised if anything goes down, but until the deadline, we're always listening. So that, that means they're not calling, they're listening. So it sounds like maybe Jeff Wilson, you know. I was just about to say, they, they did say some, somebody did mention Jeff Wilson kind of being out there. And when you think about the 49ers potentially getting Elijah Mitchell back, and at some point, using the, I don't know, the guy you drafted in the third round, Ty Davis Price, trying to get those guys on the field, mm -hmm. there might be an opportunity for a couple other guys. And, hey, if we can get a fifth-round pick for Jeff Wilson, the 49ers have done well late in rounds, I think that would be a good trade. Right. And that's tough because he's, he's been there for, for some years. And I think he's been everything that they've wanted. That's one of the guys uh, outside mm -hmm. of his injuries, but they can always count on him to come in and, oh, man, this guy's hurt. This guy. Okay, Jeff Wilson, carry the load for us. And he does. So I'd assume he's a Kyle Shanahan type guy. Trading him away, that would probably be kind of tough. That would be tough. Uh, and trade away running backs is dicey because you could become light on running backs really quick too. But then again, you know, you have to make a roster spot. Do you try to waive Jordan Mason and get him back to the practice squad. Does a team like the Rams pick him up? By the way, the Rams supposedly offered two first round picks for Brian Burns. They don't have a first rounder this year. So those had to be future first round picks. The 
uh, the Panthers said no. So the Rams trying to, I would be shocked if the Rams don't do something because they're so aggressive. They don't have a ton of picks to do things, but um, we'll see what happens at the deadline and we'll have it all broken down on the next pod. Winky Wednesday, Wednesday style. Thanks everybody for making Locked On 49ers your first listen. Make sure you're checking out everything else. The network has to offer Locked On Sports Today, Locked On NFL Draft, the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show, Croc and I back tomorrow right here, Locked On 49ers.